on this episode of Pawn Stars. A guy brought in a gigantic two-handed German sword. It's in great condition, but I really need Craig to give me more insight on this before I can make a move on it. I think you do this on purpose. You bring weapons in that are bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pick this up. Yeah, go ahead. Holy moly, this is huge. Did you be careful? <laughs> it's just so cool. It makes me feel so powerful. <laughs> a lot of names for these swords, two-handed swords, broad swords. Uh, the Germans called it a Zweihanda, two hands. And it's meant to be used in combat as a frontline weapon when you first make contact with the enemy. OK, imagine you've got an enemy coming towards you, and you run in and start moving this thing around. You're going to lop off pole axe tops. You're going to cut horses' legs in half, cut people in half. You're going to penetrate the line. Cavalry comes in behind and starts to, you know. Mop up. Yeah, exactly. And it was quite effective. But the really cool thing is that it's light. This thing weighs 10 or 15 pounds, probably more towards 10. The hilt is so big, too, to provide balance. I mean, it's basically, look, I mean, I can roughly perfectly balanced. With antique arms and armor, it either speaks to you or it doesn't. A two-handed sword is an incredible weapon. It's an epic piece of history. You hold it in your hand, you close your eyes, and you're back in the 1600s. Everything looks legit to me, but um, I definitely want you to look at it. I'm thinking it's 1628. I'm assuming this was used in battle. It doesn't look like it's ceremonial. Yeah. And we have a few stamps on it. Take a closer look. OK. OK, it's, first of all, it's very well marked. Let me give you sort of a tour of what these marks tell me. Um, OK, you think that Johannes Mephisit was the name of the manufacturer? No, it's Johannes Alawich. And it says here something really interesting. It says, Mephisit Zollingen, made in Zollingen. They still make knives there today in Germany in the Ruhr Valley. They're making swords there since well before 1628, when the sword was made, which okay. is what this is here. Sort of has a couple mysteries to me. These initials, I don't know what AF stands for. I don't think anyone will ever know. Um, this is interesting. It's a Lorraine cross, or at least it should be. Uh, OK, short answer, this is real. You are right. It is old. It was made in 1628. It's an incredible sword. Period. Thank you. Yeah. OK, Great so, taste. So what do you think it's worth? One sold at auction in 2010 for 7,200 pounds, plus a buyer's premium of 20%. This is worth $13,000. That sounds good. It's worth a lot more. It could be. Uh, it really could be, but it's subjective. You just don't know when. All right, but um, that's why I call them in. Yeah. Thanks, man. Hey, Rick, take care. Not that you need help beating me down on price. <laughs> Not when you're holding a sword like you this. You can my leave friend. now. All right. Okay. Take care. Thanks, man. Take care. Collecting is subjective. Uh, some people just collect swords, some people just collect German artifacts. And so a sword like this could be attractive to weapons collectors, historians, anybody. Someone who wants a cool man room, put a sword like this in your room. That's the thing people are going to pick up, right?